multiple times, if you've seen over the past year or so, probably two years, let's go back a little bit. For whatever reason, some people like to try to smear Aramate. It can be over any issue. I'm not here to like go to bat like for Aaron or anything, but it's getting to be a bit ridiculous. <laughs> if it's not TYT and multiple times it has been TYT, it's majority report. And so here we go. It happened again. This time it's coming from Sam Cedar. So Aaron posted this on Twitter and I was like, what is this about? He said, Sam Cedar co-host claimed on air that I deny genocide all day long. Oddly, they didn't say what genocide I allegedly deny. I asked Sam's producer to either substantiate the claim or retract and apologize. Rather than do either, they made a segment calling me a grifter. Oh boy. He goes on to say, Sam's segment doesn't say what allegedly makes me a grifter, refute anything I've said, defend his show's allegations that I deny genocide. He just states that allegations of a Uyghur genocide are controversial, have, have anything to do with its clickbait title. He goes on. On top of all that, Sam Cedar claims to be unfamiliar with me and my work. So why do a clickbait segment attacking me rather than just retract and apologize? Sounds griftery. Oh boy. And here we go here. So I want to show you what Sam Cedar said. So he actually responded to this. Don't be surprised. He's responded to me before too, when I didn't even mention him like in a tweet. It's really weird. It's kind of strange actually. He said, I apologize. I don't do our YouTube titling and have just seen. I have eliminated the words left and grifter to reflect the segment more accurately and out of my respect for you. Should be reflected in YouTube soon if not immediately. Let's come out for a second. So he said that he removed the words left and grifter, but he's kind of being uh, condescending here in a bit because when you see the word that is left, you're gonna see that in just a second, you'll understand what I'm talking about. So yes, he did remove those words, but there's one word that's left that's still pretty cringe. Just wanted to point that out. So let's go back into the tweet. Let me scroll down here. Whoopsie. All right. So what was interesting about this is I don't think, I don't know why this is not moving here. Okay. What's interesting about this is that um, I don't think Sam was taking the hint from people in the the chat in this thread because other people went on to say, now this is coming from a Tom Lee, Adam Lee or whatever. Hey, Sam, you're so confident there's a genocide. Could you please provide me with any proof of it anywhere? I've done a lot of digging and it looks worse than Iraq WMDs. Other people went on to say, let me see if I show you that other one, this one. Now this is coming from Blue Checks. It's weird that Sam even interacts with Aaron Mate. Aaron Mate is an actual accomplished journalist, like in real life. Sam is the host of a political commentary show that blows with the wind. It's like an NBA player, Mate, playing against the professor from the And One mixtapes. I don't know if you guys are familiar with And One, but it's like, uh, an NBA thing. But if you're familiar with that, you'd understand like the joke and like, he wasn't taking, I don't think Sam was really getting the hint from people in the thread, trying to let him know like, Hey, Sam, uh, I think you're, you're, you're wrong on, on this one. Of course, some people did defend him, but I don't know. It, it's pretty, it's pretty cringe. So I want to show you what they're referring to. So the video in question. Now I told you, I do want to show you 
that he did change the title, but I still want to show you what the title says now. So now the title is Dumb Dumb Claims Democracy Now is Pro-Imperialist. Dumb Dumb. So he called Aaron Mate a dumb dumb. You see how you get it? I removed the words left and grifter to reflect my respect for you. So he respects him so much that he left the word dumb dumb in the title. Let's get into this video, you guys. Let's get into this because I want you to hear this for yourself. It's pretty cringe. I have other receipts I want to show you as well that are going to back up actually Aaron's point. But let's let's see what uh let's see what Sam had to say here. I have some things to say about this. There was a, a former uh, reporter from Democracy Now named Aaron Mate, uh, who he worked there. Yes, I know that only because he... See? They're ready to do stories about people and they haven't even done their research on those people. You heard Emma say he worked there? Damn, I knew that, Emma. You've been doing this longer than me. Come on. Come on. Let's go back in. Um, has, I think, has has claimed that they have become, he's become very disappointed in how oh. imperialist, pro-imperialist they've become. Well, I, I, that's, when I think of pro-imperialists, I certainly think of democracy now. Um, and, uh, well, you should actually, I do want to jump in and say something about this. I don't know how long it's been since people have watched democracy now, but their tone and their message has changed. Uh, I talked about this last year. Actually, Aaron came on the show. I'm going to show a clip from that in just a second. But I did ask him about that. Have you noticed that certain networks like Democracy Now, they've changed their message when it comes to war? And they have done that. And you can go back to many of their clips from last year, especially when it came to uh, talking about Afghanistan, when they were talking about this whole conflict right now with Russia and Ukraine. They have changed their message. Democracy Now has changed when it comes to foreign policy. Uh, go back and watch the interview that they did last year with Noam Chomsky. Go back and watch that interview. But Again, this goes to show you they're not they're not even doing the research. They're just making claims based on things that they've known from years ago. How often have they been watching them recently? So let's go back in. Let's do the thing. Uh, apparently, it's my understanding that in my absence, um, there was uh, when Nomi was on, um, she had made a statement about him that um, uh, that he has taken issue with. Now, I, I, I want to be uh, clear about something. Um, I my knowledge of this guy is extremely limited. But I'm going to go ahead and call him a grifter anyway. My knowledge about him is extremely limited, but I'm going to go ahead and smear him anyway. Up until actually uh, today, I had never read anything by him. Well, this was actually an interview, uh, uh, the, the Chaz Friedman one. Um, but my only experience of this guy starts with about 30 years ago. I did a commercial i was hired to do a commercial for the u.s open oh and did you ever no one cares sam get to the point it's gonna take him like five minutes to get this point out by the way first did i ever tell you about this no which one the golf or the tennis the, the golf the uh tennis <laughs> and it was with this other guy and we did these like really stupid spots on like a um, you know uh, with the uh, on like a on the roof of a, like a, some tall building in the middle of Midtown Manhattan, but then okay. we moved up to where uh, where they they do the tennis tournament. Mm -hmm. Arthur Ashe. Uh, yeah, and sounds boring, by the way. So far, wasn't at this event, but it sounds pretty boring. I shot a promo for the next day for the finals on the court with I think it was either Pete Sampras or Boris Becker. Wow. And I was I literally. I can't remember which one. I, I, I can't remember that. But I was so on the court. Cool. I literally had to run out onto the court as they were playing. Wow. 
And it was one of the most incredible things I had ever seen. I don't understand why that's exciting, but okay. The, 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 how, you know, I used to play tennis when I was a kid. Right. But I never realized how hard they hit the ball. I mean, it was a totally different game at that level. We have the video. And I mean, I, well, well, it's not important. No. Not important. Maybe later. Don't play it. We don't want to see it. But, but it's out there. But <laughs> I'll watch it um, later. And it was then when I understood why, because I was always flummoxed, like, why would someone be a ball boy? And it is to see, like, to be on the court yeah. at that moment is really exciting. And I bring that up only because my w- entire experience with Aaron Mate I was wondering where you're going with this. has been when I have gotten into, like, Twitter beefs with, like, I don't know, with Jimmy Dore. Or, uh, um, How did we know that Jimmy Dore's name was going to come up in this video? How did we know? How did we know people can't mention one person that's not a part of that TYT circle without adding Jimmy Dore to the equation? Not really sure what Jimmy Dore has to do with this situation at hand. That's how far gone some people are. Nick was right. Nick was right when he said people have Jimmy Dore derangement syndrome. He's right. That's setting up the smear, by the way. That's setting up the spear, the smear. Let me mention to people that this person somehow was associated with Jimmy Dore. So the people who hate the Jimmy Dore left will not feel that he's credible. That's setting up the smear. Let's go back in. Uh, Glenn Greenwald or something like that. He shows up like he's a ball boy, like completely out of nowhere shows up in these uh these fights and i'm like what who are you why are you here yeah and he's kind of like a barnacle that's an insult by the way by the way for those of you who have ever like played sports like i played sports uh all different types of sports i'm not going to get into all of that but when someone makes a reference saying that you're like a ball boy, not like the actual ball boy that does go and pick up the balls and stuff like that. But when they use that reference to apply to someone (laughs) kind of like as a person, that's actually an insult because people in sports, especially they see the ball boy as someone who goes and fetches the balls. They don't see them as relevant. They don't see them as important. So Sam knows what he's doing here. Such a cheap shot. Full. No, I just, it just, it reminds me of a ball boy. Okay. Anyways, so I, I just want to make that clear. Uh, but Matt, uh, these guys have been on you for some type of like uh, correction. So here is the clip uh, that we were talking just, about. Of, no, of Nomi. Yeah. You can spend your time doing what Aaron Mate is doing is denying genocide all day long. Because that's, that's also a path to making a lot of money on the internet. Okay. So, um, and... Apparently, um, Nomi was talking about the um, his denial of the Uyghur genocide. Yeah, here's and an example. To be fair, from my perspective, uh, <laughs> Em and I could have maybe stepped in to clarify that. I'm a little bit sensitive to that criticism. But anyway, it's... Yeah, I just want to say there's there's so much exaggeration here. Like to say that someone talks about genocide all day long. I don't think anyone talks about genocide all day long. That was just an exaggeration. That was no Miki being no Miki. That's what she does. Sam Cedar, like in this story, in this discussion, he doesn't really seem to be that knowledgeable of what happened or what's going on. He's just using this as an opportunity to try to smear someone, anyone that seems to be associated or affiliated with Jimmy Dore. Here is the uh, substance to that. And here is, and, and this is where uh, Aramate says, um, I guess. In response to Josh ago, Rogan um, saying, China using Imagine in the Beijing 2020 opening ceremony. John Lennon must be rolling over in his grave. Imagine if there was no Uyghur genocide. And Mate says, there is no Uyghur genocide. And you fully know that I can only imagine there being no neocon propagandists. The world would be a safer place. Now, uh, I, I think uh, the world would be a safer place without uh, neocon propagandists. So I agree with that. Um, and, and, and to be fair, there is a uh, controversy over whether there has been a Uyghur genocide in China. There does not. Um, not anymore though. And, and I'm going to get into that in just a second. 
not anymore. Like that's an older tweet. I'll just let it, I'll let the video play. It seemed to be any controversy as far as I can tell. I mean, I'm looking at the Human Rights Watch, which I am sure um, has been cited. Uh, well, I don't know for a fact by Aaron Mate, but uh, Human Rights Watch has been uh, cited certainly in, um, you know, in the context of, uh, of other situations. And I can understand. Um, so let me interrupt here for a second. So let me play this just for a second. I want you to pay attention to something that he just said. Again, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Listen to this. Been a Uyghur genocide in China. There does not seem to be any controversy as far as I can tell. I mean, I'm looking at the Human Rights Watch, which I am sure um, has been cited. Uh, well, I don't know for a fact. by. He doesn't even know. He doesn't even know. Sam just told you, well, you know, there doesn't seem to be controversy from what I've seen. I mean, I don't really know for a fact. Then what are you talking about? How are you going to do a show smearing someone for talking about genocide all day long, apparently, and basically saying that what they're saying isn't true, but he just said he doesn't even know. Aaron Mate, but uh, Human Rights Watch has been uh, cited certainly in, um, you know, in the context of, uh, of other situations. And I can understand the and a human rights watch has also been mentioned about the United States as well. It is not just the Uyghur region. It's not just China. Also with the United States. In fact, there was a whole committee, a global committee that formed after the George Floyd protests that actually called on President Joe Biden. I talked about this on my show last year, did a whole segment on it, walking people through that summary of that report. They sent a letter to Joe Biden and they said, this global committee, by the way, people from all over the world, they said that the police brutality in the United States was an example of uh, human, what did I just say? I forgot. Sorry, guys. I don't know day. for a fact by Aaron Mate, but uh, Human Rights Watch has been. Human rights. That's what they were saying, that there were certain examples in the United States that identified and showed that there were human rights violations right here in the United States. And they called on President Joe Biden to act and Joe Biden did not respond. In fact, I still have the letter somewhere. I have to pull it up. But it's not just China. And just because there are human rights violations per se, that doesn't mean that there's a genocide. Those are two different things. But let Sam go on. Been uh, cited certainly in um, you know in the, the context of uh, of other situations, and I can understand the criticism of saying we should not use the term genocide lightly. Um, I mean, it's the I, like I'm critical of people calling the war in Ukraine a genocide. That's right, like Putin said, uh, Ukraine is doing a genocide. Now, geno Ukraine saying Putin's doing a genocide. Like this is a politically operative term. Yes, um, but I w can I just say like my piece? I like I'm. I'm like certainly skeptical of certain neocon propagandists talking about this, like Marco Rubio talking about genocides. Well, it's like when people like that are talking about it, I need to know what we're defining as a genocide. Cause like with, when I see like what's going on with the Uyghurs, like cultural genocide seems like a watchword to at least be concerned about uh, with regards to that. Yes. And, uh, but I don't think, or you could just look up the definition of genocide. There's that too. I think say like Marco Rubio is uh, as sensitive to what a cultural genocide is as say I would want to be. Well, does Marco Rubio believe that the United States committed the genocide of Precisely. Native Americans? Um, does he perceive the uh, continued occupation of uh, <laughs> of Palestine, of the West Bank and Gaza as a cultural genocide um, in and of itself? Because then if we're using a term like that, it all depends on the context of who's using it and why they're using and it. And what they mean, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, I've been out for a couple of weeks, so I haven't followed this, but at least as early, uh, as recently as the first or second week in March, there were something like 200 uh, human rights groups who had written a, an open letter to the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights. They had done a report on the Chinese government uh, rights violations targeting Uyghurs, um, uh, Uyghurs, I should say, and uh, it's Uyghurs, by the way. Yeah, it's 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 spelled with a U, but it's Uyghurs. Um, I don't think that there's any controversy that I don't know how many. If it's uh, hundreds of thousands, um, uh, Uyghurs have been essentially um. 
So he just said, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands, but you just said you didn't know how many he doesn't even know. He didn't do any research, just got on camera and just said, this is my chance to smear someone associated with the gray zone. A lot of people like to do that, by the way. Didn't he do any research? Let's continue. I don't know what you would call it. Concentrated into camps, <laughs> uh, labor camps, that there is an assault on them uh, based upon their, their being Uyghurs. And it is uh, controversial as to how many of these people have been killed. Um, and so the violence has broken out. And at the very least, there is a cultural erasure uh, that is happening. That seems actually very similar just in pattern to American genocide of the Native Americans, mm -hmm. like a, a major nation state expanding infrastructure into, you know, parts of the hinterlands that go through populations that aren't quite ready to <laughs> or willing to. Uh... I still don't see where the term dumb, dumb fits in yet. I don't see where the term dumb, dumb fits in. See, it's interesting because I remember Emma and Nomiki during this whole spat with Crystal Ball and AOC and Amazon. I remember Nomiki saying, well, they just do these clickbaity videos. These this Jimmy Dore crowd do these clickbaity videos. This is a clickbait video. Dumb, dumb claims democracy now is pro imperialist. I haven't heard them identify the dumb, dumb part yet. Where's the dumb part? Let's go on. You know, uh, meld in. And, and you can make it and you can have a debate about the precision of those kinds of terms. Like we're having a nuanced conversation about that now. But I think an outright denial is. Well, that's fine. I, mean, I would certainly go. Yeah. Uh, I think at the very Too least. Far. That is our uh, clarification um, that um, uh, that uh, he seemed to have wanted. Um, that uh, um, that uh, they don't know. He don't know. He's just talking. He's just talking. Half of this video could have been cut because half of it he talked about playing tennis, being in part of a commercial. And that clarification is that... Um, he says there is no Uyghur genocide, and um, certainly it is. Um, there is controversy as to whether there is a Uyghur genocide. No, there isn't controversy towards that. Not today. Not today. This video was posted. Let me pull this up for just a second. I'll finish it and I'll show you. This mm. was recent. I didn't realize that we were called upon for the. I, well, the, apparently, uh, through Twitter, there has been, uh, you know, a, a big issue. Uh, the ombudsman. Uh, now, in this video, did you hear him point out any examples about democracy now not being pro-imperialist? Nope. No examples. Didn't see one. Didn't hear one. But democracy now is in the title. I still didn't see the dumb, dumb part explained. And remember, this title also had Grifter in it, too. He didn't point to any examples. He didn't do any research. He didn't show any type of evidence to claim what he is saying. But that's okay. Because I do have evidence. And I'm going to fill in that spot. So let's go ahead and pull up this interview. Now, this was last year. Aaron Mate came on, and that was one of the questions I did ask him about. So I'm going to play that question, his response, and then I'm going to show you what the State Department is saying about this quote-unquote genocide in China. So let's go ahead and get into this. It should be right at that mark. Yeah. Listen to this. I asked just about that question. Listen. So I want to get your opinion on this. Uh, recently, Joe Biden has decided to boycott the Beijing Olympics uh, due to uh, genocide and crimes against humanity that's supposedly happening in China. And I want to get your take on this. Number one, is there a genocide happening in China? And two, what do you think about the United States government like making that call, criticizing another country for not treating people there correctly? 
Okay. So that was the question that I asked. And I remember going back to this because I had to ask myself, why did I ask him about that? And then I found that clip and I remembered because at that time, the U.S. government wanted to boycott the Winter Olympics in Beijing. That's how that topic came up. So listen to the response. Well, first of all, I mean, let me, you know, when I get this question, I respond with the question. If you really thought that there was mass killings of people in Xinjiang, which is what genocide is, that's mass mass extermination, don't you think, A, there would be some more evidence for it? And B, don't you think we'd be doing more than just like criticizing China on Twitter or boycotting the Olympic Games? I mean, don't you think there'd be calls for uh, a UN intervention if there was actually a genocide going on? And it's the, the U.S. has this... Um, way and it's it's accepted blindly in the u.s media to just lodge allegations against designated enemies um no matter how farcical and wild and the media just accepts them on faith and much of the progressive media too unfortunately has accepted these claims on faith without looking for what the actual evidence is what does the evidence actually shows well look again there's that word guys evidence and the gray zone's done phenomenal work on this the main source for these genocide claims in Xinjiang is a guy named Adrian Zentz, who is a uh, right-wing evangelical bigot who says that he's on a mission from God to uh, basically change Chinese society. And, you know, reporting from my Gray Zone colleagues has showed that his the, some of the figures that he cited are fabricated, and they're based on taking data about... Um, about birth control measures in China and spending that to, to, to meet evidence of a genocide. It, it's a complete farce and it serves an obvious geopolitical purpose, which is that China's economic power is rising. It's a threat to US supremacy. And that's why we're seeing this increased rhetoric against China. There's what's actually happened in Xinjiang, as far as I know. And again, I, I have limited, I have limited, uh, I have very limited visibility because I've never been there for myself. But basically, they have an extremism problem. Uh, they, they've suffered many terror attacks. They've responded in ways that people like Chaz Freeman, who's a veteran U.S. diplomat, served as Nixon's, ambas as Nixon's translator when he went to China. Chaz Freeman says are, are repressive and harsh, and you know he wishes that they wouldn't do. Um, and I have no reason to dispute what he says. I, you know, he, he's a very credible voice to me. But to say that this is a genocide is so farcical. I mean, basically well, what they've done is they've imposed these mandatory uh, centers where people go for education in a bid to uh, de-radicalize people. That's the idea behind it. And in the process, I would not be surprised at all if there have been human rights abuses uh, and all sorts of bad things. But okay, did you just hear that? He just said he would not be surprised if there were human rights abuses as well. Now listen to the rest of this. But that's far different than a genocide. And look, just compare it to what the U.S. supports around the world. The U.S. is the number one oppressor of Muslims around the world. Compare what is happening in Xinjiang, where you have China in response to, and, and these terror attacks are real. I mean, people, there have been a series of terrorist attacks from Uyghur extremists inside China. There was so we never denied that there was any type of attacks going on. In response to that, China launches this, this whatever you want to call it, a re-education, de-radicalization initiative okay so that's what china does what does the u.s do uh, in response to 9 11. You know? here's the comparison you know, a similar problem of islamic uh, extremism leading to terrorism the u.s launched a global war where it asserted supremacy over the entire world to invade countries massacre civilians torture people uh, kidnap people from abroad and bring them to guantanamo bay and torture them there i mean it doesn't even rise to a uh, what China is doing, whatever it's doing, doesn't even rise to a fraction of what the U.S. has done and continues to support, for example, in Gaza, this massive open air concentration camp where Gazans are deprived water, all their basic rights. They can't leave. They're bombed whenever Israel feels like it. And then we have the gall to claim that we care about China oppressing Muslims and we and we think there's a genocide. It's it's a uh, it's a farce. And. What I care about is how many people on the on the progressive left have fallen for it. Okay, I'm not gonna play the whole thing. You can always, you know, check out that interview uh, on my channel. I'm trying to see, like, when was this? I know it was last year. Anywho, I'll check this and get back to you guys and figure out what date this was. 
So you can see that full interview, but you heard his explanation there. Now, what does the state department say? Sabby's going to show you. Now this is coming from the state department. Ladies and gentlemen, again, what I'm showing you right now, Sam could have done this himself. State department lawyers concluded insufficient evidence to prove genocide in, in China. I'm going to go down to this paragraph right about here. A State Department review during the final weeks of the Trump administration of China's conduct in Zhejiang pitted the department lawyers against advocates of a genocide determination. Those advocates included Kelly Curry, who then served as U.S. ambassador at large for global women's issues and is a longstanding critic of China's human rights record and former Senator Sam Brownback, who served as the department's ambassador at large for international religious freedom. It resulted in a split memo from the department that was sent to Pompeo, according to two officials. Beyond the legal debate over the characterization of China's repression of its Muslim population, the genocide designation carries enormous political weight, applying pressure on the United States and other countries to punish a global powerhouse whose trade, environmental, and security activities are intertwined with their own. But wielding the G word without a solid legal basis also carries the risk of politicizing and eroding the power of the designation, which has been invoked in the past century to describe the worst episodes of mass killing from the murder of millions of Jews during the Holocaust to the slaughter of around 800,000 uh, Rwandans during the country's genocide. The cautious conclusions of the State Department lawyers do not constitute a judgment that genocide did not occur in Zhejiang, but reflects the difficulties of proving genocide, which involves the destruction in whole or in part of a group of people based on their national, religious, racial, or ethnic identity in a court of law. It also points to a disconnect between public perception of the crime of genocide and the large, excuse me, the legal definition in the 1948 Convention of the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide, which has long been interpreted by the State Department lawyers to require intent to bring about the physical and biological destruction of a group. Let's go back up to the top again. State Department lawyers concluded insufficient evidence to prove genocide in China. That's coming from the State Department. So even if you don't want to believe what Aaron said about this, the State Department is telling you they had no evidence. They don't have enough evidence to prove it. For example, there's evidence to prove the Holocaust happened. There's evidence to prove that that was a genocide. There's evidence to prove that there was a genocide, what happened to people in Rwanda. There's evidence to prove that that was a genocide. You just heard what Aaron said in the interview. There wasn't evidence, there wasn't enough. Sam Cedar didn't even want to look into the State Department. So you guys know I, I always have receipts. I do research. Sometimes I get things wrong. I come back and correct it. But how could you not look this up? I don't really know this guy. It was like 30 years ago. I thought he was a ball boy. Uh, he's a part of that Jimmy Dore, Glenn Greenwald people. Yeah, I don't know much about this, but you know, for him to say, like, obviously there, there, there was one and he didn't even know who's watching that show. Who's watching this stuff? The people that watch, are they picking up on this? I'm gonna go to some of the comments in the chat. 
hit that like button guys that helps me with the algorithm thank you for this uh george democracy now no longer invites glenn greenwald or aaron mate anymore because they don't repeat the trump derangement syndrome message i'm not surprised thanks for the super chat ajf sab you're totally right about d now still does some good coverage but they are taming themselves watch since watch them since 2016 and watch them since mid 2000s yeah they've changed their talking points have changed thank you for the super chat as well been more on the side of jimmy Dore, but he and his detractors are all guilty of splintering the left base critique others defend oneself don't name call please I wouldn't say that individual people split the left base. I think the left base split because there's a group of us that have a greater sense of urgency to get things done because we need those tangibles. And then there's a group of us that don't have that sense of urgency. I see a class divide on the left. That's kind of what I point towards. Thanks so much for the super chat as well. TYT and majority report, et cetera. These folks basically resort to name calling, in my opinion, don't do the same. Ignore them until they make undue assertions. You rock, Sab. Oh, thank you, AJF. Greg Brew said a Sam explanation is the ultimate form of evidence. He didn't even pull up any, there was nothing. I'm like, what? where's your evidence? Where's your research? I don't know, man. Kyle said that vid is from December 22nd, 2021. Thank you, Kyle. Thanks. I knew somebody would help me out. Yeah, so that interview was in December last year. Steven, thank you for the super chat. If I believe that there were real actual genocide in China, I would be demanding action, boycotts, and strong action and calling out China, not calling out Max. Wow. That's a good point. JB's in the chat. I agree. There's definitely a class divide on the left. You said it, Jabes. You said it. 